Good morning and good evening, my dear brothers and sisters. Warm welcome to one and all of you. And I greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, in whose grace we are all um, united and you're all um, doing well. We are all healthy. We are all wealthy. We are all prosperous. We have everything that we have. It's because of one man, the Son of God, who suffered on the cross, taking your place and my place. And therefore, without a doubt, I can say that I am what I am. It's because of the absolute grace and mercy of my Lord and Savior, Jesus. Whether you like it or not, that's the truth. Not just the fact, but the truth. Because Jesus brought in, introduced truth. is what John 1.17 says about which we have spoken in this series itself. Why that is called as truth? Because... He accomplished the messianic prophecies. So when you keep up your word, when you keep up the promise, who are you called? Who are you called in this world? Generally, tell me. You make a promise and uh, you say that, you know, I'm going to do this in 10 years from now. And 10 years later, you exactly do it in the way how you had um, <clears throat> committed, right? <laughs> then who are you called? Oh, after 10 years, you see this brother. What a faithful brother, what a loving brother, what a truthful brother, what a fantastic brother, this brother, that brother, right? All possible titles, you'll be crowned with those titles, isn't it? And can you imagine Jesus fulfilling the promises after 4,000 years and how faithful his father is and how faithful he is, is what you and I need to always visualize, always remember that. He who called you is faithful because he is known for truth, especially. Yeah, he doesn't lie and he is not walking in darkness. He walks in light and he also helps every single one of us in the mankind, in Christendom, wherever you are, to walk in that light, to walk in the truth. Yes. And therefore, as long as you are soaked in this word of God that we are, Preaching and teaching, yeah, um, by by every possible means and um, from the various um, what I say the the scriptures across the Bible, and if you see these kind of teachings are quite rare, and I can take all my boast and pride in the Lord, and He is calling us for such a unique ministry, better than the people who had been involved in theology, Bible colleges. See, I'm not degrading anybody, right? I'm not a competitor to anybody and no one is my enemy. I want to make it very clear. But our ministry is a unique ministry. The reason is because God called us to cover everything that is missing in Christendom. And there are very, very few ministers who do this job. And Jesus came to this world to abolish sin, to put an end to sin and sinful deeds. And except those teachings and preachings, Christendom speaks everything else. Motivational speakers are too many these days. Yeah. They occupy the podium. They build mega churches. Why? Because, yes, those are all quite interesting. Because you're not talking about sin. You're encouraging people to live in the same rubbish way, filthy way they, are, they have been living in the past. And therefore, they love you. Yeah. And the crowd multiplies and uh, that doesn't mean anything to God. In the name of Jesus, you are a pep talk. I mean, you, 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 you're, you're conducting some pep talks and you are the motivational speaker and all that. It doesn't matter to God. Sorry. Yes, but Jesus was never behind crowds, but crowds were behind Jesus. And although, can you imagine the, yeah, the, the, the truth that remains the same for even 2,000 years, the crowds were thronging on Jesus, by the book of Mark says. Yes. And why the crowds were thronging? Not because they were seeking after his motivational speeches and all that. No. He even calls people brood of vipers. <laughs> he calls people as whitewashed tomb. Matthew 23, you take and read all possible things, but still they loved him. Yeah, but still they want to hear. Even the Pharisees. How many times they would have sent their people, how many times they themselves approached the high priest and all, all of those. Tell us plainly whether you are the son of God, almost begging. Why would you beg? Tell me. See, if somebody slap on your face and spit on your face or somebody kicks you and treats you shamely, 
in front of people and all that jesus almost did that through through the words why because and jesus never had that intention of hurting those and neither was he ill treating them he was loving them and he was grieved in his heart that these people don't understand the truth and therefore he did not pick the soft ways he, he picked the hard ways of teaching these uh, truths and conveying these uh, truths to these people therefore somehow their uh, you know their, their hearts will be enlightened with the truth and that was his intention but the more he kicked them the more they approached him <laughs> can you believe why because that's the power of the truth that's the power yes bible says hebrews 4:12 the word of god is two edged sword that that pierces your heart and it separates the mind and soul and spirit and then it teaches you the right things and it helps you to think and analyze and it it brings light it moves you it, it pulls you out of darkness and what happened what happened is the more the number of times they approached uh, who pharisees sadducees scribes how many times and the greeks also right the scholars some of the scientists they approached jesus the more they approached the more the word of god was working in them but this but this bunch of I, i won't call them with some hard names but i really pity them and jesus wept over jerusalem right before they sang hosanna or after they sang hosanna i don't remember the sequence right why he wept because how much i tried and strived hard to save you and i had seen that definitely the word of god was working in you as a you know you you lighting up the fire the fire was in you but then you never capitalized you put it down each time i lit the fire you put it down why because you joined hands with the evil spirit the father of lies and from the beginning he was rebel uh, to god and he was an adversary to god and you joined hands with him that's a reason all the efforts that i had made to bring you to speed to bring you to god you you know it all went in vain jesus was overwhelmed with sorrow bible says and then he wept over jerusalem there are two incidents where he wept number one is lazarus incident when he saw these ladies crying you know that's why when ladies cry everybody you know the heart melts seriously you know, already they are feeble and when they cry it's not a easy thing but jesus wept yeah and the second thing is he he recapped all the efforts he made to speak the truth to proclaim the gospel to pronounce victory but these guys would always push back deny they never understood jesus because why in 3 days down the line he is going to be crucified and he saw that already very sad isn't it but then he is the word himself that had been accomplished yes not uh, through his birth and through his lifestyle and he was consistent in his walks with god he would say no to every temptation but the tempter was at work right from day one of his ministry and what day one right from the day one of his birth he was trying to kill him multiple times yes but god was faithful and he is faithful and he will be faithful who had led jesus by his side and that's why jesus says you know i am the truth i am the life i am the way yes what is the truth truth means he's faithful he's known to accomplish his promises what he said is what he said the word that proceeds out of god's mouth doesn't return back to him why the bible says i say 55 10 and 9 why because his spirit soul they are pure in nature divine in nature truthful in nature faithful in nature good in nature yeah his nature is like that and that nature can remains unchanged jesus is the same yesterday today and forever more unchanging god unchanging son hebrews 39 says that yes and that's why we have kicked off this series to talk about the most important concept that is the four nomenclature which constitutes to build the structure called the spiritual anatomy that spiritual anatomy although it may sound like it is inside your physical anatomy but then the physical anatomy is being ruled by the spiritual anatomy therefore spiritual anatomy is a superpower spiritual anatomy is dominating spiritual anatomy is the driver this guy is like the conductor in the bus i all with me and about which we had been discussing a lot and welcome to this 21st lesson in this series it's 
overwhelming it's swelling not able to conclude <clears throat> i don't even know how many more sessions are needed but we are not at rush because heaven is not at rush sending jesus for the second time therefore this is the golden time yeah this is the grace period and i call it as golden time golden era where you have enough time you can learn as much as possible you can correct your behavior lifestyle as much as possible yes you can get light as much as possible you get get closer to god as much as possible and you don't get this back once you lose it you lose it yes you're 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 holding the crown carefully here and definitely you will enter with much more bigger rewards into paradise and uh, you know after that after the judgment you will be given your rewards and you will enter into the city of god to dwell with him eternally and you will have no regrets that i had wasted my time i didn't learn i didn't, i was not taught enough i had i didn't have enough light on me and i could have done this i would have done this and all that you know you don't have regrets you would have done enough you would have learned enough and that's why please read some chapter 1 verses 3 and 4 <clears throat> god is pleased with those who meditate on his word day and night and meditating on his word is very important what it is what does it mean is not about um you know accomplishing the targets every day one chapter every day one book some people read one book which is good but do that once do that twice so that you have an idea right you have a overview but after that slow down absolutely yes slow down but once you read the bible you are at a good pace solid pace two chapters per day you finish it in a year yep if possible in six months it's possible I read two chapters per day it's possible to finish to be finished in in a, in a month and weekends you read 10 chapters it's possible just get a an overview and then please slow down absolutely and once you go through the bible and then after thereafter <laughs> let the bible go through you yes and the word will bring that enlightenment the word will bring that wisdom the world will the word will bring that knowledge and it will drag you out of the trap it will free you from the bondage of slavery it will give you the visibility yeah so that's why it is very 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 important i all with me um you're able to understand what we are trying to say here we are trying to say here get closer to the word of god and and the word travels to you in, in and through you and then you get light all right um we had been dealing with multiple subjects but all of them in connection to this concept of body mind spirit and soul and in my 25 plus years of spiritual walk with god and attending various churches of different congregations yes of different denominations different traditions i haven't heard anybody even teaching me one lesson about the body mind spirit and soul and for a very very long time even after being saved very long time almost 20 plus years i was thinking spirit and soul is the same yes and turn your bibles with me to the book of um leviticus chapter 7 verse 11 and we will see how much ever possible we will cover today but we will not rush for the life of the flesh is in the blood and i haven't i haven't i have given it to you on the altar to make atonement for your souls for it is the blood that makes atonement by the life yes there are two different things that we could read here and the number one thing is without a doubt we are talking about the blood right and the blood is instrumental um which is nothing but it it is life giving see there are different organs that are working to cleanse the blood isn't it uh, for example kidney's main job is to cleanse the blood and that's why those who have kidney problems they go through dialysis because why the toxics in the blood yeah um, are going to be removed and the same blood is recycled 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 and have you ever imagined and wondered that scientists almost discovered everything artificial liver also is ready artificial heart is ready but they are not able to discover blood <laughs> they will never be able to why because 
that blood is sanctified, that blood is precious, that blood is um, divine, and that blood is life. And Jesus shed that blood on the cross to redeem you and me from the bondage of slavery, from the bondage of sin, and God will demand us to show that respect. Yes? <clears throat> And he will never any never allow anybody to duplicate that blood. What happens? See, um, they discovered this tabernacle after a long hunt. Why? Because um, in the book of Jeremiah, they did some research and they found out Jeremiah hid that tabernacle in a, in, the, in the cave, right? And they were looking for that cave looking for that cave and looking for that cave nobody could discover and israeli government gave up and then an archaeologist i forgot his name he it's in the youtube definitely you and in the google that guy said okay let me take it up very famous archaeologist i forgot his name that guy found out the cave i'm cutting the long story short then he went out and he found the tabernacle and then they brought it and on the tabernacle they find something like a uh, patch um, because the tabernacle is was was glittering it's made of a metal you you take and read the book of uh, exodus leviticus and god instructs this is the way how you should make it and these are the materials you should use and moses was very careful in following those instructions and then he went ahead and built that right and that was preserved for years and uh, when they discovered it it was it was remaining this exactly the same way how it was amazing isn't it and when they found that patch little patch they found it is some sort of blood um, or maybe they thought it's animal blood or maybe it's some animal try to come in and then it 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 it, it died but they were trying to find where is that animal uh, some decomposition a skeleton something should be there or maybe the animal was half bleeding and then it left the spot etc etc they thought but then they thought they will send that patch the, 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 the blood patch to the laboratory and they got tested and they found out the blood cells were alive <laughs> can you believe and they found out it's the blood of a human being it's a blood male blood um, and they discovered the group and they found out see generally what happens is the blood when it is poured out it loses its um, the structure of the genetical structure of the cell and all that it dies that's why blood is to be preserved in certain temperature and with certain chemicals and stuff like that and you will see blood bank they they transport it in a certain box and stuff like that right and they have a method to preserve it i'm not a medical student um, I, I i have very little knowledge on medical science but i'm just telling you this but this blood when they, they took to the laboratory it was alive but using that dna using that cell they cannot manufacture another 20,000 liters of blood. Why? Because it is not possible to do that. <laughs> Simple answer. Why? Because God doesn't want us to duplicate the precious blood of Jesus or the blood which carries life. Yes. God allowed every every other organs almost to be, uh, you know, duplicated, right? And a duplicate heart and a duplicate liver. I think they are researching duplicate. Um, heart yeah sorry uh, kidney and all that but god did not allow two things to be duplicate they tried their best medical science had been trying this for so many centuries yes so many millenniums and they were not able to discover why why because and two things two organs number one is blood or two components of the physical anatomy number one is blood and you know what is the number two? Your brain. They tried that research enough. And you will see a lot of fiction movies being released with this imagination. 
yeah they take the brain and they plug it into a dead man's body and then he becomes like him and um yeah something like that crazy movies are there i i don't end up watching that but sometime i used to watch long ago and then um i i gave up uh, watching such movies um, it's crazy because why they are not able to accomplish it in realistic manner therefore they went into this line of sight and they get into the imaginary world and they manufactured uh you know they they, they produced uh, such fiction movies all right the point i'm trying to say here is body and mind what is the nomenclature of our spiritual and spiritual anatomy body and mind and body and mind needs blood right and the body and mind definitely um uh, you know uh, is going to be nourished with the nutri- nutrition um and all sorts of um, things that are needed for it to function smoothly and healthy and uh, you know without any kind of um, um, what to say it, it doesn't it doesn't lack for anything so and that's why the blood the the mind the brain these two couldn't be duplicated by the mankind because they are precious and they are part of the spiritual anatomy structure and god doesn't allow because why they are precious spiritual anatomy and its structure and the nomenclatures the organs that constitute to this spiritual anatomy they're not something that you can treat it cheaply and stuff like that yes and that's why god doesn't allow so let me come to the original point two two aspects i told the first aspect is this where you have understood that why blood is so precious because it's needed it's a nourishing agent it keeps your body and mind alive yes and as long as it's alive it's going to function but it depends right it is going to function in god's way or is it going to function in uh, you know devil's way it depends with whom you have um, uh, join hands to make the partnership and stuff like that um you know it depends so my point here is always you ensure that you are walking in right conscience because you have to give an account the second aspect i'm already telling you have to give an account on the day of judgment wasting the precious blood of jesus yes wasting in the sense by what tense i don't even have his blood in my hands brother then how am i wasting not wasting the blood but wasting the sacrifice behind the blood yes that's why it's called as precious blood why it is called as precious blood it's called as precious blood because money cannot buy that see some of the jewelry is very precious diamond uh, what is it kohino diamond is very precious those things you can buy with money billions of dollars uh, i i think uh, you know Uh, people spend and they buy this diamond jewelry and stuff like that those are materialistic but this is spiritual yes for your physical anatomy for your materialistic needs you can spend money and buy anything that you want anything that you desire but it's impossible to buy anything that you desire towards the spiritual anatomy by the help of money no it requires sacrifice and that sacrifice that's why i read this verse right for the life of the flesh is in the blood and i have given it to you for the altar to make atonement for your souls for it is the blood that makes atonement by the life right you know the real meaning of atonement um you know as per the dictionary it is the compensation or it would say i would say it's the replacement or it is something like you know you do something bad and somebody else takes your place and somebody else saves you it's as good as like you 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 got caught in a big debt or a big problem and then the trouble makers have circled you either you give your money or we kill you right now yeah somebody walks from somewhere 
east or west any direction somebody walks and then says hey what's a problem who are you you just tell me what's a problem this guy is supposed to give me one million dollars but he is not giving if he's not giving he's going to be dead right now he says is that all fine he pulls out the check he signs it up and he says what's your account number and what's your name beneficiary name he fills it and he gives the check just just vanish from this place and immediately the troublemakers vanish yes and then he technically it's called as redeeming right he redeems the property and he gives him he redeems his life yes he was supposed to be killed he was supposed to be dead and gone and his blood was going to be shed and he deserved that right he was his blood was supposed to be shed for the sin for the crime that he committed because he took somebody's money and he 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 spent that and he was spendthrift and he was not able to repay and and he's debted to that person and that person comes and he happens to be a rascal or a rogue and he was supposed to take his life and somebody walks in and you know who's this person it's about you and me i'm talking yeah we're all debted because why our forefather adam yes and our great 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 grandmother eve they commit the sin and they have sold the birthright to the devil and the devil comfortably took over this world and he's not ready to move out of this place he circled us right for 4000 years all the generations were circled they were killed they were murdered they were devoured they were blindfolded they were deceived right and each time they were going into the deception according to the law of moses these guys were taking the animals and they were sacrificing as an atonement yeah as a replacement replacement for their sins or the redeemer of their sins but they again fall into the same sins they again become uh, they, they again got back to the old state of being the debtor to someone and they again are filled with the guilt conscious they again violate the law they again violate the commandment they come back again with animal they sacrifice it go back fall down come back with animal sacrifice it go back fall down come back it was rota it was on rotational uh, it was on rotation these things were consistently happening in their lives and over a period of time the people of israel understood there is something missing and that's where you know the pharisees they researched the scriptures and there happened to uh, come up a gang actually pharisees were formed 500 to 600 years before jesus came why because they want to research two reasons they were formed number one they want to preserve the word of god and the number number about which i have spoken in a different series i have explained in a historical way and number two reason is they want to research the scripture and find out what is the eternal atonement what is the permanent relief what is the permanent fix for this problem there should be something told by god and you know what they researched and found out god had been mentioning or talking about this as early as genesis 315 <laughs> because he's well well aware that you're all going to be violators or you're going to be failures or you will be you know filled with full of guilt conscious and then you will be looking for atonement permanent atonement and a replacement yeah for the remission of your sins something that could wipe away your guilt conscious something that could free you from the debt because the debtor is always consistently troubling you harassing you isn't it you get all those bad, bad dreams guilt conscious i have i've been sin sin i'm talking about the righteous people here those that are unrighteous they don't fall into this category at all why because they have preferred to walk in the pathway of filth and um, unrighteous and uh, they love to murder they love to steal and steal and grab and not talking about those I'm talking about the righteous people and pharisees were righteous and they emerged as a group that preserved the gospel they studied the gospel they memorized the book of torah they were quite aggressive and that's why jesus said whatever they teach follow but don't follow them don't follow their lifestyle yes and and jesus never gave them up right 
until the last moment he was patiently replying to them sometimes yeah angry sometimes hard ways but he can consistently kept on talking right he never refrained uh, from replying to them that's a very good habit that you need to learn from jesus and that tells your spiritual condition that tells how strong you are in your spirit and how patient you are and in one of the important fruit of the spirit is patience and long suffering very very important ones okay go, going back here um, they were looking for an alternate atonement and then they discovered ah messiah is to come redeemer is to come yes deliverer is to come and they have gone into their own imagination you know what is that imagination because that was the time where the roman uh, reign was existing all roads lead to rome that is the proverb right and since the romans were harassing them in the name of tax in the name of battles and so many other nations also came and kind of um, you know they burnt the temple and stuff like that and uh, then the herod's government came and they started to rebuild the temple and to please these jewish folks and but then he was having that bonding with the roman government and but the romans were the superpowers there the way how they visualized this messiah was he's going to come with the sword put in you know inside the sheath and he's going to remove the sword and slay the heads of all the romans he's going to be coming as a warrior because why in front of joshua he said i am the warrior are you for us or are you for um, he asked a question right then the warrior says i am for 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 you i am going to go ahead and fight the battle and remove your sandals for the ground where you're standing is holy ground that's the replication of jesus he's going to come as a warrior but they never understood the sword he had in his hand was the sword of the spirit he's going to give us the sword of the spirit spirit and the holy spirit right ephesians chapter 6 you take and read you will understand it was not that physical sword where he will take and start to kill people and bloodshed this is how they imagine therefore they were waiting for the warrior according to the imagination who would go, who would come and free them and give them that independence day give them their nation once again back into their hands and and that's why you know there were a lot of people like uh, you know simon the zealot zealots right zealots uh, zealots and you know uh, judas iscariot right his father they were all in that gang there were multiple gangs like this where you can call them technically as terrorists yeah but roman empire to call them as terrorists because they rebel against the government they suddenly uh, kill the troop that would be marching through the forest or some uh, valley or something they would attack them and they would kill them that their job is to kill them why because they thought once messiah rises up because they also had the predictions right daniel made the predictions and uh, you know the messiah is going to come soon and their idea was to basically join hands with those Uh, with, with Messiah and and be part of his army and this is what where their imagination they did not understand the concept of atonement right sacrificing blood they ignored comfortably and only through the sacrifice of blood because why as early as Genesis three God demonstrates that right he kills an animal blood was shed and he takes its skin and he gives it to Adam and Eve clothe yourself. and protect yourself cover up your shame yes you don't regain your glory what you lost is lost because this blood that is shed as animal's blood is not going to give you the glory but here is a temporary relief where you can um come out of the shameful the shame the nakedness the shameful situation and you can live you can survive and that's why the laws of moses was like that animal skin it was not like that animal's blood I'm sorry it was not like the redeemer's blood the messiah's blood which gives the permanent relief from the sin or the bondage of sin there is no deliverance that was like a temporary relief just covering the nakedness for that point of time and then um, but they still live in what live in curse like on the curse ground and live in the guilt and live in Uh, live as bonded slaves and they never get regain their position the dominion what they had lost to the devil yeah 
they never regained it and this is why god promised that he's going to send the redeemer he's going to crush the head of the satan right under your foot roman 16 20 says yes he helps you whoever accepts the name of jesus you are going to crush the head of the satan so the spiritual concept was misunderstood by this guy they took it in literal tense that the messiah is going to come and fight and the bloodshed is going to happen but that's not an atonement bible is talking here right i picked that verse and i'm connecting it with the new testament also that is the old testament this is the new testament what i why am i explaining all of this this is the spiritual condition of mankind this is the spiritual condition of a christian or a christendom they misinterpreted can you believe 4000 years they have been living on a different philosophy and even after jesus came and he moves around and he does good to the people and then he says whatever belongs to the caesar give it to the caesar ah what kind of philosophy is this what kind of doctrine is this how can he say this we thought he's going to say come let's all gather up rise up as a gang and we will fight against them and overpower overpower them and overthrow them out of our regime and let's regain our kingdom and all that they thought you know they're going to do some he's going to do some miracles like moses burying the entire pharaoh's army right under the red sea he, they were expecting such miracles and and jesus teaching teachings were driving them crazy <laughs> driving them berserk and because they were not able to follow what kind of doctrine is this this guy is insane and that's why they were not able to follow his doctrines why because they were blindfolded they were deceived their body and mind were soaked into the worldly doctrines and worldly wisdom for a very very long time and who are they technically they were uh, the jewish people who were soaked in the scriptures yes and you can compare it with uh, the christians who are soaked in the church activities and sermons and pre uh, teachings preachings fastings prayers and prayer uh, time family prayer but they understood nothing about eternity right they never had light on themselves they were living in deception and what would be the condition of their spirit completely governed and managed by evil spirit and it will appear last session also i have told this it will appear all as well yes why because you are friend of the devil your body mind and um, uh, what is it spirit all of them uh, prosper they they do well in job in their at their workplace they get promotions they buy cars houses bungalows and they do well and they and he they are taken good care and they are very happy but after they reach heaven or after they reach paradise in the day of judgment they will all be shocked because they were thinking all these days the blessings were from god actually no you are worshiping the mammon and he blessed you because he has powers to bless his people do you know that and at the same time he has powers to bring disaster too and then you will start speaking angrily against god had i not been going to church had i not been carrying my bible had i not been reading bible why is this god took away my son at an young age it was not god it was the evil spirit because he is known to be murderer and nothing good comes out of him because he is devil and he is evil and wicked but your anger is against god because you are deceived you live in deception likewise these people lived in deception they were thinking the atonement for blood is nothing but the deliverer comes and fights for them and that that's why there is another theory judas iscariot learned this doctrine from his father and he couldn't accept this kind of jesus who says forgive people and let your words be seasoned with grace and when one slap uh, on your cheek or show the other cheek and he couldn't accept this that's why he he thought okay probably to test the messiah let me do this let me hand him over and obviously if he's the true messiah he's going to pull up his sword and protect himself save himself and he will save us and when they arrested him when they beat him when they took him to the court he understood his his eyes were opened and he had that light on his spirit but this stupid fellow went again into deception he made the wrong decision to kill himself since he had got the light right he should have capitalized on that and gone back to jesus ask for forgiveness he could have gone right under the cross nobody is going to kill him because he were friends of the roman soldiers because he was the one who betrayed 
He could have just gone, gone, joined hands with those ladies and said, Jesus, forgive me, touching his feet. What, what do you think Jesus would have done? Same thing which he said to the thief. Judas, you are going to be with me in paradise and not before you write those 14 epistles. Why? Because the original plan was to make him write those 14 epistles as much as Paul had written. Paul was just a replacement. Paul was not in God's plan. Judas Iscariot was in God's plan. And he would have very well accomplished that mission. He would have very well gone to paradise. And he would have got a higher place. Yeah, Peter made that right choice. He denied him. But he came back to Jesus. Yes, he never killed himself. Because why? In his heart, deep down in his spirit, he knew that my Jesus is kind. And he's going to forgive me. And tears was... Uh, you know, running down his cheeks and but still he went to the old fishing business. He would throw the nets, but tears were running down his cheeks. Why? Because he's still not out of it. And Jesus, after his resurrection, tells Mary Magdalene, go and tell Peter that I am risen. He did not mention anybody's name, not even the name of his uh, favorite disciple, John, who was standing right there, right under the cross. And disciple and disciple John should have got offended, right? I was there standing there right under the cross before your death. I was the one who witnessed. I helped Joseph Arimathea to help you to, 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 be, to be laid in the tomb. But you never remembered me. You remembered Peter. If I, were, if I were John, I would have definitely got offended. But see, this Peter fellow who was silently crying in his heart, weeping badly, and he wept bitterly. It's what Bible says. And he ran like an insane in the middle of the streets. Peter, Jesus remembers this Peter. <laughs> That's the attitude of Jesus. These fellows never understood. So what I'm trying to say here is the message that I'm trying to convey through this atonement preaching is what was the actual atonement? The atonement was sacrifice of blood because only blood can wipe away the sin. Remission of sins can happen only through the bloodshed. And God demonstrates it. And God enacts that law to help them understand, hey, the blood sacrifice is the one which could cleanse you. And therefore, Messiah is going to be killed. But these guys never understood. Not all of them. Some of the Pharisees did understand, but their disbelief blind their heart. Who are they? They are also living in deception. Both of them are deceived equally. See, you cannot say, I know the Bible in and out and all that, but your lifestyle, your belief system, how much you value the words that you read. Being obedient to the word, being the doers of the word is one aspect. But even before that, although you being the hearers, have you really understood the meaning? Yes. Is this the way how it has been written? Have you understood the meaning? If there is light on the meaning of the word, then the second half happens automatically, spontaneously. What is the second half? You will be the doers. Your lifestyle changes. Your words changes. Your mouth speaks a different thing. And you are not the same angry person anymore. You are not the cheater anymore. You are not the grabber, murderer anymore. Everything else will be falling in place. But the first thing is, as you are hearing, did it reach your heart? Those who have ears, let them hear, Bible says. Who said? Jesus said it. Multiple times. In John chapter 8, you can see he said that multiple times. What is that he hear, uh, ear? He's talking about heart, the inner person. He's waking up that inner person. And he's waking up your spirit. Those of yours, let them hear and repent today. And say no to the evil spirit and accept Holy Spirit as their leader. Therefore, their body and mind gets adjusted to this doctrine. And therefore, they become the children walking in light. They do the right things. They please God. They walk according to the divine will and plan of God. And what gives you this new doctrine? The blood of Jesus. Why? Because it's called as grace. Yeah. And grace gives you that helper, the Holy Spirit, who helps you, who teaches you. He's the best teacher, Bible says. Not just a helper and companion. He's a teacher. He teaches. He, as now he is teaching to you and me. Yes. These were the concepts Christendom missed for centuries. They are still missing. They are going to continue to miss. Why? Because the deceiver is not going to be weary or tired. He's going to continuously 
blindfold the Christendom. And that's why these sessions are important. You understood? The Pharisees who are well versed in the doctrines of God, in the in the in the Torah, the, the five books of Moses, they never had light on them themselves. And they call themselves as rabbis and teachers, and we know everything. Come, you follow this, and they start even judging people and pronouncing judgments and you know um, uh, throwing stones at people they kill people right and even prostituting but this fellow would have gone and shared the same but with the prostitute and then he next day morning he behaves hypocrite that's why jesus said hypocrite and when they challenged him that lady to be killed uh jesus said whoever doesn't send go because half the crowd would have gone to her home that's why they all dropped the stone and went away no rest of would have gone to some other uh, adulterous home uh, or they would have sinned of a different kind nobody is righteous and what can make you righteous this precious blood of jesus introduced grace salvation redemption deliverance thus helping us to be the children of light walking in the spirit bible says walk in the spirit galatians 5 16 and um, 1 peter 1 60 be holy because i am holy what can make you holy when you walk in the spirit what can help you walk in the spirit when you have understood this concept of salvation redemption deliverance and saving grace and these things constitute together called as you know walking in light and you are not going to be the children of darkness and you see this simple misunderstanding of they not understanding the concept of blood i explained the importance of blood and there are many christians even today they're born again believers and stuff like that. They take part in commun communion. They don't have any repentance in their heart. Their ways are not changed. They're still the same. They've not given up their habitual practices as far as the sinful deeds are concerned. They're still the same. But they go and take part in the com communion. And likewise, they sin. It's called not called as repentance. I mean, repetitive sins. That's called as regret. Because when they say, "Oh, I how, how I feel sorry that something like this has happened," why? Because they have never given up that sin. Tomorrow morning they will continue the same sin. And then what happens? They go and confess the sin and say, "May the blood of Jesus cleanse me," and all that. That is like treating the blood of Jesus like tap water. Your hand is dirty. You use tap water. But the true repentance, you will not repeat the sin for the second time. You will say no to it because you love Jesus. Why? Because you have understood how much it costs for him. And you have understood the value of blood. Blood is life. Why am I speaking all of this? On one, on one single words, why am I struck for a very long time? I'm just telling you the simple fact. You need to have light on what you're learning, what you're being taught. Yes, and you don't have light, you have not understood, then what is the condition of your spirit? It lives in darkness. And if your spirit lives in darkness, obviously your body and mind lives in darkness. And when you three are in darkness, your soul, the inner man, obviously he is dark. And he's living in sin and there he goes, he gets his reward accordingly and thrown into the lake of fire. You don't want to be the reason for your inner man to be condemned and punished. All right, good. Acts chapter 7 verse 59 says, And as they were stoning Stephen, he called out, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Yes. And why would Stephen say, receive my spirit? And this is the proof that the spirit goes back to God. And none of these guys understood um, the concept. And at the same time, he witnesses that he was able to see Lord Jesus and they were all the more worked up and they clearly concluded this guy is demonic. But then can you imagine the way how he would um, conduct his lifestyle and the how much, oh, you know, how much of light he had on the gospel and everything he was speaking the truth. Acts chapter 6 and 7, you take and read. Wow, what a, what a sermon. And that sermon was not more than a hover. The only person who speak for a hover was Stephen, one of the powerful speakers and preachers and teacher. And he conveyed everything pretty much. The whole Bible he conveyed in matter of a hover. Wow. 
and he was not trained preacher like uh, who's that paul who went and uh, got that gold medal from the gamaliel university very tough to get a seat there to get a place in gamaliel university one of the prominent teachers and after um, nicodemus was expelled from the church and uh, you know from the synagogue uh, he he went and uh, joined hands with uh, uh, gamaliel and gamaliel and nicodemus they were very prominent speakers and teachers Stephen never had such an exposure and can you believe yet he spoke even better than Paul Paul took 14 epistles to write many concepts but this guy was able to speak in less than two chapters and in a harvest time he was able to cover the entire bible and he spoke about Jesus too and he was killed first blood witness yeah and then why because he had the true understanding and the true light upon this body spirit soul and my body mind spirit and soul concept and that's why he clearly says god i give my spirit into your hands and he clearly knew that his soul is going to paradise absolutely when he was able to see jesus when he knew that his spirit is going to be taken up he definitely knew that his soul is going to reach paradise what do we learn from this two things you need to be the children of light you need not be trained you don't have to brag 30 years I was a Christian. What is the condition of your spiritual status? Tell me. And at the same time, brothers who are newly born again, never ever get intimidated that, oh, I need to walk like this brother for 30 years. Huh? Then I only am going to get. No. No. Stephen never had such a great experience, such a long walk with, uh, you know, Jesus. In fact, he never saw Jesus. <clears throat> he became a disciple only after his resurrection. And yet he spoke such a, fiery sermon uh, and then he died and he is the first blood witness before which no one was killed for jesus no one gave their lives for jesus and look at the courage look at the boldness and he was not an experienced christian many people tell i am the elder of the church you know you don't have to be intimidated you don't you need not necessarily bible demands that you need to have this much of the, you know training and these many years you need to sit there. those are all traditions introduced by men not by god yeah quantitative thing is introduced by men qualitative measure is introduced by god what is the quality of your spiritual health condition of your spiritual health look at the guy stephen and he was not given a role that is so attractive he was the one who was serving food to the uh, old people Yes, yet he was very strong in his spirit. And because why? He accepted Jesus and he gave his spirit into the hands of Holy Spirit. And Holy Spirit gave him this light. Holy Spirit hid him and it was Holy Spirit who was speaking and teaching. And these people stoned him finally. And yes, he reached paradise. And obviously he is going to get one of the strong honors from God. And Jesus stood out of his throne. And then he came and he stood and he was walking and sorry and he was watching uh, Stephen and Stephen was able to see, see him right many many saints of God before they would pass away I've heard their testimonies after they have passed away I had never um, got an opportunity to watch it live but then many many people have testified that yes uh, I don't want to name the great men of God but they had they were able to tell that exactly at this time I would pass away and uh, I will reach paradise and all that. What a death it is, isn't it? And what a life they lived. Just like Stephen lived. Why? Because their condition of the body, mind, the spirit, soul were completely aligned with the word of God. They allowed the Holy Spirit to be their master, to be their governor. And therefore, they never had any doubt, any wavery mindset, whether they would be reaching paradise or is it God who's talking to them or not? No. And they would die peacefully. Exactly at the time, the spirit would be taken back by God and their soul reaches paradise. Don't you think, beloved, that you and I deserve to live a life like those saints of God, like Stephen, walking in light and being bold? Why I say use the word deserve because it costs so much for Jesus to shed his blood and to deliver this truth and 
to pronounce this deliverance and redeem us for a price. And we belong to him, Bible says, and we don't belong to ourselves. Therefore, never think that you can do everything according to your will and wish and desire. No. And never feel in other way that you are being monitored, controlled, and God is watching me or he's bossing me. No, he's watching you, but he's not bossing you. You are the boss over your life. You have been given that authority. You have been given that dominion. You have been given that freedom, free will. Stephen had that free will too. Paul had that free will too. But they were ready to die for God. We are not teaching the gospel that you all need to die as blood witness. No, I am not trying to say that. But if God has predestined you for that, you will be willing to go through that traumatic experience. Why? Because the condition of your spirit is strong and bold. And it would never compromise on your spiritual standards. Are you all with me? Heads bowed on and eyes closed. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for this wonderful time and opportunity. Thank you for talking to us in a very personalized way. And we appreciate your fellowship and we appreciate your teachings that bring us light. Thank you for talking to us about the blood of Jesus. And thank you for helping us to have that respect and honor for the blood. Help my brothers and sisters. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. Subscribe to our channel and get access to all our playlist videos. And share it with your friends and relatives. And um, soon I will meet you with lesson number uh, 22 and then uh, we will see how long it goes but we are not tired this series is just getting um, <laughs> i mean overwhelmed day by day and god is doing a fantastic job let's see we will close on time um, and, and appropriately god bless you take care